Um, before I begin, I just want to say a congratulations to my niece Jada, who has just graduated high school and will be starting Queen's University in the fall, and she'll be studying political science. So in today's debate around our democracy is really fitting. It's, it's really poli-sci 101. Speaker, it's an honor for me to rise in this House to debate Bill 195. Indeed, I feel that it is my duty as a member of this chamber to record my strong opposition to this bill that threatens the values and the principles of our democratic institutions. The motto inscribed above the north entrance to this assembly reads, Ut incepit fidelis sic permanet. This translates from Latin to loyal she began, loyal she remains, representing the loyalist refugees who, from people from all backgrounds, who settled here in this land. Loyalty to Canadian values and loyalty to our country and loyalty to our province. The very institutions that we are loyal to in this house, democracy, due process, and good government, are under threat from Bill 195. My first qualm with this bill is that it is unnecessary. This government has a majority and can pass any legislation it wants through the proper processes and channels, which includes legislation, motions, standing committees, orders and councils, broad emergency powers and orders. The government does not need to bypass the existing powers in order to do its sole will. To do so, they willfully avoid important and needed oversight and accountability. This legislation will allow the government to sidestep the legislature and the people of Ontario, whose duly elected representatives will not be allowed to weigh the benefits of the proposed measures or hold the government to account. It will remove the accountability mechanisms that are vital to our democratic institutions in Ontario. The member from Ottawa South rightly noted, since the introduction of the emergency measures on March the 17th and throughout this pandemic, we've seen enthusiastic cooperation not only between different levels of government at the federal, provincial and municipal levels, but also across party lines in this very House. Although there has been reasonable disagreement, all members of this House work together to implement unprecedented changes that COVID has required of us to carry out our work on behalf of Ontarians to keep the population safe during this health crisis. We have mostly put aside partisan differences to provide swift action and support for Ontarians when they've needed it the most. The mantra has often been, we're in this together. Speaker, the results speak for themselves. Ontario is now getting prepared to enter stage three of its recovery, thanks to the collective efforts of millions of people in every part of our province. Not only is this legislation unnecessary, Bill 195 is a dangerous power grab. The province is well into the recovery period. Most businesses and places will reopen across the province in a matter of a mere days. Are we in a recovery? or are we in a state of emergency? The Premier cannot have it both ways. The Premier wants to emerge from a state of emergency, but keep the free use of the powers that he has grown accustomed to, minus the critical oversight of a democratically elected parliament. This is dangerous ground. We no longer need to respond with the same sense of urgency that we did in March. We are still in the midst of a pandemic but soon we will see an end to the emergency. And we can take time to review and debate new measures instead of forcing them through the legislature unexamined. If we know, if we're no longer in a state of emergency, why is the Premier keeping the emergency powers for his exclusive use to use whenever he sees fit? This diminishes the civil liberties and freedoms that we have as rights in this province and country. The Emergency Me Measures Act is a serious piece of legislation. It actually is only to be used in extreme circumstances in a crisis. This legislation, Bill 195, is in fact a power trip bill. 
This legislation would grant extraordinary, unprecedented power to the Premier without any oversight from the people of Ontario and their elected representatives. It is actually akin to giving himself a War Measures Act-like tool. You remember that. It was used in Canada in both World Wars and the October Crisis. These extraordinary powers gave the government the ability to take drastic measures, some of which was necessary and some was found to be excessive and controversial. In fact, the Momiji Healthcare Centre in my riding of Scarborough Guildwood, it stands as a reminder and a cautionary tale to all governments to slow down, step away from bills that give you too much power. Ontario elects representatives to work together, to provide checks and balances on power. The people of Ontario do not expect the government of the day to consolidate power to avoid transparency and scrutiny. Just because you have the power does not mean you must use the power. I always remember this from my former colleague, Nathalie de Rosier. This is an excessive bill. By the government's admittance, the COVID-19 threat is already under control. This excessive bill reveals the old Premier Ford. The Premier is back to his old ways. Remember when he threatened to invoke the notwithstanding clause in the early days of his government to interfere with an election that was already underway. This is yet another case of this government's willingness to grab power at the expense of our democracy's health and our individual rights and freedoms. Considering the government's indifference towards our democratic institutions, it is deeply concerning that the powers in this bill are designed to stay in place in the lead up to the next election. Is the Ford government hoping to tip the scales in their favor? We won't know. We won't be able to ask questions. The government will have exclusive and sweeping powers with very little oversight. The powers to pass emergency measures are supposed to be used only in extraordinary and extreme circumstances in order to respond to extraordinary situations. They give the government a great deal of power to change our province on short notice. The state has immense power over our daily lives. As we know from this spring's lockdown and all of the various stay-at-home measures, it was for the best given the fact that we were in a health crisis. People understood that, the need. But it was a vulnerable time for everyone. We all felt this vulnerability and this exposure and relied on our government to do the right thing and to make decisions in our collective best interest. It was a decision that was justified in this House with broad consensus from all members, from all parties. Extending these powers keeps Ontarians vulnerable, long past the peak of the pandemic, and it is entirely unnecessary. Extending the emergency orders currently in place after the emergency has ended will allow the government to override all manner of Ontarians' civil liberties, including collective bargaining rights, which is a charter right. I urge the Premier to stop this power trip. I believe that this power grab in Bill 195 is excessive. I will vote against this bill in favour of our democracy and the health of that democracy that will stand now and into the future for all Ontarians. Thank you, Speaker.